Alright guys, in this video I want to go over overrunning pulleys or one-way clutch systems on alternators. So this is uh, by all means not a new technology, it has been around for quite a few years. Um, but there's actually a lot of people that don't even realize that they have it on their vehicles and also a lot of technicians. And they might be diagnosing a vibration from an engine and thinking it's uh, an engine mount what it could actually be coming from your alternator pulley. So now if you're trying to figure out on if you have an overrunning pulley onto your alternator, uh, one of the first things you could do is just look at the face of the alternator where the pulley sits and see if there's a cap over it. Now if there's a cap, 99% of the time you're going to have an overrunning pulley, but always take and check your service data to make sure that you actually have one so that you're not trying to diagnose an issue that probably isn't there in the first place. Now, the whole purpose of this pulley is to actually let your belt freewheel free in one way and lock in the other way. And the purpose of this is to uh, dampen vibrations that are coming from the engine and also uh, reduce fuel com consumption and increase the longevity of your belt. Now, this is actually a very, very simple system. Um, the two main types that I have actually worked on have been the Sprague type and the uh, spring type. Now, the Sprague type, what ends up happening is that when it's turning this way, it free spins and when it starts to turn this way there's a little sprag on the inside and it starts to jam onto the pulley and when it starts to jam on the pulley that's where you're able to get the rotational force needed in order to turn all the internal components of your uh, of your alternator and allow the, the belt to turn the other components onto the vehicle also now uh, with the spring type the spring type is basically I've used seen this more on Kia vehicles uh, inside of here there's actually a spring and it's actually press fitted inside of the, the pulley. I'm going to take this one apart just to show you guys. But it's press fitted on the inside. And what ends up happening is that as you turn this this way, the spring contracts so it actually gets smaller. So it'll go like this. And as you turn it the opposite way, the spring starts to open up and starts to press against the sides and create a friction force in order to allow all the, the alternator to turn and start charging your vehicle. So what I'm going to do right now is take and open this up and we're going to... So this is one that was taken off the off of a car that actually failed, okay? So it actually ended up jamming on the inside. So I don't know if we'll actually be able to see. I'll turn on some light. So as you can see inside here, it is uh, grooved, and that is from the spring actually staying stuck onto the walls of the pulley itself. So we're gonna go ahead. I'm gonna show you guys how this guy look works, okay? So as you can see, as I start to turn it this way, I don't know if you guys can actually see the spring start to open up like this Let me try to get that for you but the spring starts to open up okay and when that ends up happening it takes and it puts pressure on the side of the pulley and the pulley actually starts to grab and work like a normal pulley now when you have misfire events or uh, combustion events going on into the vehicle what ends up happening is that that uh, gives shocks and it starts to slow down your engine so what it ends up happening with the pulley is the pulley will actually back off slightly and allow the engine to take away the shocks and then continue as normal after the combustion event has uh, taken place. You don't really have combustion events that could do this. It could also be caused by hard acceleration or hard, hard uh, deceleration events also. Um, or even uh, other pulleys onto the vehicle that might be starting to seize up. But this is supposed to take away most of the vibrations out of the engine in order to give you a, a, a more uh, smooth feeling. So, that is the way that this one works. Now when you come over an, onto an alternator and you're looking onto a car and the client might be complaining of a vibration coming from the engine, um, there's a few telltale signs that you could see that maybe if your overrunning pulley is actually working properly or not. So the first thing would you do would be look at your uh, Look at your belt and look around the tensioner area. And if your overrunning pulley is actually starting to fail, you will see your belt start to jump. So you'll have like a jumping belt that looks more like this instead of a nice fluid motion into the belt. Now, if you see that happening, uh, I would suggest that you go over and you stop the car and you take and you try to see 
if your alternator free wheels in one, one direction only. So in order to do that, you would have to remove your belt. And then after your belt is removed, take and jam up the, the fins for your, uh, for your rotor. And you want to take and you want to turn your alternator in one direction and see if it spins. Okay? And as you can see, this one does spin. And my fins are not moving on the inside. Now, if you would take it and the whole thing would spin like this, that would mean that your alternator pulley, uh, overrunning pulley, is probably jammed up and causing all your, your your vibrational issues that you might be experiencing. All right, so something happened on to uh, my camera, and it actually just stopped recording. So, but this is basically it for this video, so I hope you guys enjoyed it, and I will see you guys next time.